Welcome to Our Paramotor Nation. Tonight's show is sponsored by Why My PPG, offering a full-service paramotor training experience with three on-site instructors and limited class sizes. Florida Flight Sports, year-round training at your truck training headquarters. You can do this. PPG lights make one heck of an impression with countless patterns and colors on your paramotor. Lone Star Paramotor has become one of the most sought-out paramotor schools offering foot launching and strike training classes and much more. PPG Zone, one stop for everything you want to know about the paramotor scene, where fly-ins are happening, and so much more. Aviator Paramotor is a cornerstone for paramotor training while offering its students some of the top paramotor equipment. Fly PPG Discovered Power Paragliding has helped people from around the world get into our great sport. Wisconsin Flight Sports, they make it affordable and accessible for you to get your paramotor training. Charlie's Soap, an all-natural laundry detergent and household cleaner are like no other. 1UP Adventures and ParamotorProps.com sharing their passion for flight on adventures around the world. Skylab Paramotor SIB, teaching paramotor pilots of all skill levels collapse recovery and advanced maneuvers. Drew North Paramotors are American-made, lightweight, cutting-edge, fully customizable paramotor frames, complete units, wings, and accessories. Check out their website today. Blackhawk Paramotors USA's mission is to produce the safest, most powerful, and most reliable powered paragliding equipment in the world. Paraswag USA, your complete powered paragliding gear source. iFly Indiana provides US PPA certified powered paragliding training on your equipment or on theirs for prices as low as $2,500. Wicked Wings logo can help you have a one-of-a-kind glider with one or multiple colors. Visit the Our Paramotor Nation website. Check out the upcoming shows, the past shows, and all of its sponsors. And now, let's get started with this episode of Our Paramotor Nation. Oh, there we go. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Our Paramotor Nation. I guess my timer clock was off there. We'll have to check that. Check that out. What's going on? Welcome to Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I'm David Wolf. if I haven't met you. Hope you're having a great day. Thanks for joining us. We got an amazing guest tonight. Blaze Brogan's going to be joining us in just a second. Uh, wanted to let you know, next week we are not going to have a show. Next week we uh, I'm going to be in Yellowstone National Park. That's going to be an exciting time for me. So hopefully I make it back for the following show, which will be August 29th. And that's going to be with John Isley, big time instructor here in the United States. And then we have another show booked for September 5th. And uh, there's my friend Johnny Rippa. What's up, Johnny? Hello. hello, hello. How's everybody doing? We're good. Your microphone's a little bit loud. And I think uh, if the chat can go ahead and chime in on that, I think it's a little bit loud. All right. I'll about step back a little bit like that. Go further back. Keep going back. How's that? <laughs> a little further. All right. How's now, that? You're, now you're good. Johnny. <laughs> So, David, no, guess who we have September 5th? You are so loud. I'm not kidding. Just whisper. 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 So, so David, Softly. guess who we have September 5th? Who do we have September 5th, John? Eugene Cousins. And tell everybody from, who Eugene is. From Nirvana, North America. Oh. Eugene lives in South Africa. That's awesome. And he also owns Nirvana, North America. Wow. So He will be coming on to talk about nirvana paramotors how did you about nirvana north america and about dudek how did you possibly book this guest i tell you what i reached in a hat and i pulled out his name and there he was <laughs> just reached in it you have a hat with names in it <laughs> can we see that hat that'd be great uh... don't let robert michael see that hat <laughs> Awesome. You know, I thought, John, Yeah. so we had these couple shows. Can you believe we're, we're already into September, dude? This year went by so fast. This this year just flew by. I can't even believe it. Craziness. And uh, I thought tonight, why don't we give out a windsock uh, from Pure Orange? A Pure Orange okay. windsock. Who can't use a windsock? I mean, you, well, maybe. I, I don't know if I really – I've got a lot of windsocks. But um, – you know, new people could use a windsock. They make great gifts. I'll throw in a stick or two. They make great gifts for the holidays because everybody loves a windsock. Do you still have the windsock I gave you, the old American flag one? No. Don't you remember? It burned in the camper. Oh, no. Yeah, it's gone, man. It's gone. David. But, yeah, so, yeah, and the holidays will be here soon. You know what? Speaking of the holidays, John, we got a holiday coming up here soon, a very special show coming up in October, don't we? That's right. The holiday. It's called spooktacular the halloween spooktacular we're gonna get to you in a second place just hang tight <laughs> so the halloween spooktacular last year it was one of the biggest shows of the year 
And it's nice for you and I because we both take that show off. Last year, I you know got to go spend time with my kids and going during the show, going trick or treating. You know, you have your niece down in Boca, and you love your 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 great nephew and niece. And so you got to take out last year. Mark Amson hosted the show, and there was a lot of big names on the show. If you recall, that's right. T Tucker was on the show, and uh, who else? Uh, Todd yeah. Falstad was out. There was a lot of people. That's, uh, it was it was unbelievable. It was a star-studded show. I I've had a lot of people uh, asking if they could host the show and be on the show. And so there's some big names. That's going to be exciting. That'll be coming up in October. So how about without further ado, 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 ado we got Blaze. Yeah, yeah, Dave. Let's get to the guest. I'm so excited. What's up, Blaze? How are you? Hey, nice to nice to see you guys. Very good. Now we really don't have anything to ask you because in the pre-show, John just kept asking you questions. So thanks for tuning in tonight, and we'll see you guys next week. No, <laughs> yeah, I just I'm sorry, Ripa. I'm sorry. Let me tell okay. you a little bit about Blaze Brogan. Let me read a resume. Uh, windsurfer instructor. Yeah. Didn't know I pulled that out. How about snowboard instructor? No way. Yeah. See, I didn't. I didn't know that. I know you didn't know that because. I've been following Blaze for a while. I didn't know we did that stuff. There you go. Development coach, right? That's what yeah. we call it. Development coach. Tandem pilot. Paramotor coach and guide. You, John asked, what do you do for a living? It's hard to believe like this isn't your full-time job. Real estate. Wait a minute. My favorite part's coming up. Real estate and tree surgeon. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, kind of. <laughs> so many questions. On top of that, other topics we're going to be talking about is being a part of mini plane team, BGD team, Rise Paraglider, paragliding, and wow. he's a part of Rise Paragliding. Yes, he is, and Fly Spain. So, <laughs> Blaze, wait till you guys hear about Rise Paragliding. That is something else. Do you want to start with Rise? Well, you know, let's start with this, Blaze. For those of you that don't, for those people that don't know who you are, let's start about how you got into all of this, okay? How you got to where you are today. You don't have to go into too many details on some of the stuff that we talked about because we will get to those details. How you got to be where you are today. Let's start with that. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, funny story, really. I mean, I grew up surfing and skateboarding, you know, uh, abroad. My father was in the military, so we grew up in the Middle East. And, um, and I just... I just knew I wanted to do something different. So I kind of left school. I was 16, taught windsurfing, sailing around the world. And I just never looked back. And then I was going for summer jobs. They said, oh, come and come and do a snowboard job. So I did that for a couple of winters, you know. And that was that was it, really. Just that kind of first jobs out of school, working on coral reefs and boats. And mm. oh, yeah, I loved it. Absolutely great time in my life. Uh, and then I moved back to the UK, uh, met my lovely wife. We, I'd known her since I was 15, but we kind of got together and I started a tree business. I always loved climbing <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, did that and property company. And, and that was that really. Yeah. I mean, now, what, a, what a run that was. <laughs> now, wait a minute. When you say tree business, were you like climbing these trees and cutting them down? Were you, uh, that's interesting. To yeah. Me. Yeah. So like yeah, yeah. how climbed, how high would you climb and cut things and all that stuff? Oh, you know, whatever's there, as big as they come. So super dangerous stuff is what you're saying. I mean, you know, I, I never had an accent, touch wood. Like I always, and that's kind of leads me on to rise, really. I've managed risk all my life, you know, okay. cutting down big trees, big bits of wood, over houses, ropes, ground staff. You know, it's my business, it's my name on it at the end of every day. And so that, that learning how to manage risk for 20 years, just the minute uh, Jack and Teo, you know, saw that and what I'd done, they were like, you're perfect for us on takeoff. <laughs> All right. So, that, that's awesome. So right there, I think you just kind of led right in to rise paragliding, right? Yeah. Okay. So you got Jack and Teo de Blick. Hold on. Yeah. You just can't say Jack, David. You got to say Jack who? You say, so Jack... Pimblot, right? My pronunciation. Yeah. 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 And and Teo de Blick. Two of the most well recognized well acro pilots in the world. Teo, yeah. six time World Cup, three world championship titles, right? If I'm yeah. not mistaken. And there's and then there's you. 
yeah 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 <laughs> and i'm i i'm like i'm like i'm like ripper of the group you know like i'm i'm the old guy <laughs> you know ah! like Okay, I that's, can handle that's it. That's me, you know. Wow, like, you got I, warmed I, up in the pre-show, didn't you? <laughs> it's okay. So, right. like, Jack's Jack's twenty-one, Teo's 23, 24, you know, and I'm forty-two. You know, like yeah, plus six. Perfect. Come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's perfect, really. They, you know, they they're good at doing the teaching, the instruction, the acro, and I'm good at the safety and the kind of. You know, I've run a business for 20 years. I help them out with that a little bit too. Okay. All right. So so that's awesome. So the rise is is the two instructors and you and you set everybody off the off the uh off the mountain. That's right. And, and they take them down and, and, and take them through the maneuvers. That that's unbelievable. Um anyone under the tutelage of those two guys, I mean, they're in the hands of the best of the best. And as far as I'm concerned, you being there too as well. So that, that sounds you. like a hell of a run. Yeah. I mean, the the pilots progress, you know, really well. Uh, they don't push anybody through. You know, there's no accelerated curve. They go at the, the pilot's pace. But the way they explain things is really clear. The, you know, the way they talk them through every frame by frame of their run uh, from the video of onboard and we have a video on the ground. And people get so much out of it. There's such a depth of knowledge, you know. There was um there was a comment that you made a couple episodes ago. We were talking about SIV because of course you you teach the SIV and you teach the acro. And your comment in the chat, thanks for watching by the way. Comment in the chat was paramotor pilots don't need SIV like paragliding or something like that. Do you remember making that comment? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I do. Yeah, yeah. All right. And and I I I did add a caveat at the beginning like it's. I can't remember it exactly, but basically I, I'm not saying don't do SIV. If, if you're a paraglider pilot, you should do SIV hundred percent. You know, every paraglider pilot should do SIV uh, because it is des designed, you know, the course SIV is situation in vol. So situation in flight and it's designed for paraglider pilots. This course, you know, it was being taught before paramotors were even around. So it's all about frontal collapses on speed bar, how to stay safe on wings, you know, be able to hold collapses in and fly in a straight line and things like that. We get paraglide pilots coming on and that's what they do. And they're on A, B, C's. They'll, you know, that training for them is so valuable. You know, you don't have an engine where you can thrust up and turn away from a hill you know they they need to have those skills in the bag and it has to be first nature you can't have a big instance when you're low close to a hill you, it has to be weight shift brake automatic you know and don't forget they're flying in rough air as well so yeah exactly. paragliders yeah, 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 yeah. are flying in in some very turbulent air so absolutely yeah um, and you know, you, you thermal out, you come out the top, you go on speed bar on a glide and whack, you get a big frontal collapse, you know, but that's because you're right at the top, you're at base, you know, hopefully, and you're, you're off. So you've got plenty of time to sort it out. Paramotoring is different. If you're flying on full trim on a small wing, full speed bar, and you get a frontal collapse, you throw your rescue, you know, I would throw my rescue, you know, it, it, there's no recovering it not on a small wing on full bar and full trim you, it's it's just not going to happen so my, my point with SIV and paramotoring is it need I want to do it like more like an advanced paramotor course than an SIV yes they must learn wing control with collapses and held in collapses and be able to navigate in a straight line how to recover collapses but if they want to just learn wing overs because that's what they want to do on their paramotor then that's what they should do on the SIV, you know, every pilot does all of their maneuvers and then we do wing overs at the end of every flight because that's what everyone wants to do. So it, it should, you shouldn't be forced down a, that is the SIV syllabus in paramotoring. That that's kind of my point. Okay. How long have you been flying? I learned to fly for my 30th birthday, 2009. Okay. So about 12 years. And then when did you have a desire to start teaching? Because you are teaching with with uh, 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 Teo and Jack. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm a, uh, they call it a senior air experience instructor. So I don't teach people beginners. I only teach once you're qualified up to a certain standard of paraglide in the UK, you can then, I can teach pilot and, you know, CP pilot and above. Um, so, I mean, I taught windsurfing, you know, I've always kind of loved that, you know, imparting knowledge to people. So it's kind of a natural progression, you know, and with guiding, giving people tips and paragliding is really like that as you, as I, I learned to paraglide first. So I did five years of paragliding, mm. um, or for something like that. And it, there's such a progression. You're all in it together. You're all trying to stay up you're all trying to help each other all the time. And there's this really good structure for getting people right up to the highest level of paragliding. I do feel that's something that's lacking a little bit in paramotoring. Hence, I'd like to see an advanced paramotor course, um, you know, to take people on, to give them more of cross country, to give them more of planning for flights and more awareness of, you know, bigger mountain flying. You know, there's no reason you can't go off paragliding uh, paramotoring in the same air you know you can take off midday there's no dramas with that it all works the same you know you just need to have the confidence and skill set to go with it one of the um one of the big things that has been with us recently and last week's episode is just talking about uh, the dangers of a sport and safety um it's kind of been the platform I've been really, uh, I guess, pushing lately because we've seen so many accidents, a couple casualties this year in our country. Is it is it similar over there? I mean, are you getting that? What are the big issues that you've been seeing lately? And I, I say this because of what you see in SIV. SIV can be so dangerous at times. Um, you know, we know that going into an SIV, there's always a risk. Um, so what have you been seeing over across the pond and then, you know, have you had any major incidents while being a part of an SIV course? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a good question. You know, there has been some discussion uh, when I've been at the British Championships. We were like, you know, what's going on in America this year? You know, there, there were definitely questions being asked, you know. Um, I, I don't think it's right for me to, like, say, oh, it's because this is happening or because that, you know. I, I'd never even flown in America, so it's difficult for me to to point the finger. Uh, I've been involved with another company, Free Flight Academy, who's been running SIVs for 10 years, probably nearly. And, you know, they have people go in the water, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, you know, under rescue occasionally, you know, probably at least once or twice a year, but they're operating for five or six weeks in May and five or six weeks in October with 10 pilots on each week. So, you know, the, the chances are people will go in the water um, and they get dried out, obviously wearing life jackets and, you know, live to tell the tale. The biggest dangers in Turkey is the people there teaching themselves acro mm. getting some advice off this person getting some advice off that person those are the pilots that have you know the ultimate problem mm. okay all right how about we talk about uh team bgd bgd team tell us a little bit about that uh, so that that's just come about literally that, I mean, I'm not on the, even on their website yet, but I've signed the, the team pilot agreement. Congrats. It's awesome. It's thank you. Thank you. Congrats, it's, yep. it's one of those things, you know, I think coming from all sorts of other sports, you know, it's one of those dreams, like to kind of be a sponsored pilot, you know, mm -hmm. and it may sound silly and, I, even to myself, it sounds a bit silly, but I was just kind of wanted to be in a family and I've been, I've been promoting brands, you know, and tagging them in social media and I've flown ozone and I've flown gin and I've flown tons of gliders mm -hmm. and I've flown BGD and I was just, you know, chatting with uh, Jack uh pimlet and saying i you know i'd really like to try and get on a team he's on the advanced team you know an advanced take all the best pilots tos on nova you know and you know they're kind of like rock stars in in paragliding i'm not trying to be that that's mm. for sure but 
um, I wanted to be on a team and I said, oh, well, Benny, you know, my great friend in Germany, he's on BGD and Navi. And I was like, and Jack just said, Blaze, go for BGD, write him a letter, send him your CV. So I kind of chucked something together with some pictures and stuff. And I'd, I'd tagged them in a lot of shots from pilots on our courses. So I kind of had a history of messages between them. And I think they've got a fantastic pilot program. You know, you apply to be on it and if you if you're lucky and you promote yourself well you get selected and they've got a really good structure for bringing pilots through um and helping them out with and i just think it's great it's a you know breath of fresh air coming up against i've put, come up against brick walls at other other places so i this think is, it's really this is really great. interesting and you know it, it, in in all these episodes and i think we're like 110 some episodes now we never really talked about that. There is that desire, John, mm -hmm. to to be a part of a sponsorship, you know, or a t or a team, yeah, or a team. Mm -hmm. And as I look at the chat, I'm looking at some names right now, and I'm going, I could see JP Tula one day want to be a part of the team. He's you know progressing nicely. He's, he's showing he's got some skills, and there's other people in there as well. And do you think? Blaze, do you think you need to be an instructor to be a part of a team, or can you just have a regular nine to five and still yeah. progress and become? And so that is a possibility, huh? Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, I mean, th that's the way I got into mini plane. I literally I bought a mini plane on eBay, and the, there was a dealer in the UK, but he wasn't really active. And I said to my best friend, um, one of my best friends, Rob, who owns Fly Spain, I said get the dealership i'll fly it i'll promote it in the uk mm -hmm. and he he got the dealership for the uk and spain and he sold my machine and a new one arrived in the post and, and you know i never looked back I, I kind of i've always loved mini plane i love the simplicity and the, the weight of it and you know i met diego at the world championships in 2016 and i hung out the world champs at, at, that were in britain I hung out there with him for a week. Uh, didn't get paid for it. I just was there with the mini plane tent and promoted it. And I had some nice mm. flights and chatted with the British team. And then I did some Facebook posts for mini plane UK. And it's just been taken over by a new guy, Russ, great guy. And eventually I phoned up the factory and I said, Diego, can I come out and see you and talk about stuff? And I turned up. He picked me up and we spent a week together doing some testing. And I said, I wanted to do some, you know, long range flights some Icarus, do the Icarus race and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And he built me a machine and said, Blaze, you've done great promotion. You pay for the engine and I'll give you the frame. And nice. that was how we started. And that's how I got on the mini plane team, just by being there and being a nice guy. You wow. Know? Awesome. So what a, what a great story. So, you know, it's funny, as I asked you that last question right before you started started answering, I started thinking to myself, what a dumb question. I think of my very good friend, Leah Cotullo, you know, yeah. a nurse, full time, but mm -hmm. spends a lot of invested time in, in refining her skills and making herself the best female acro pilot in the United States, not in the world. She's trying and she's hanging out with the right people and she's ozone. She's a, a team pilot yeah. for Ozone, so it can be done. You don't have to be – like I always had this thing, okay, well, I'm not an instructor, so I'm definitely not going to have the time to go out every morning and fly with my students and fly in the evening and really work on those skills. But Leah's and you now are great proof that it can be done. So, wow. Uh, t tons of people out there are, you know – to be full-time pilot, you know, you, you've got a handful of acro boys that are earning a, you know, a reasonable wage. But the rest of everybody else has kind of got us. It's their, you know, it's their hobby that they've mm -hmm. got a, a really good deal on. Um, yeah. Very cool. Um, let's go back over. So we talked about mini plane. We talked about BGD, right? Uh, we talked about Rise. We talked about Rise. We haven't talked about Fly Spain and trips to trips to Europe. So tell us about oh, that. Yeah. And, and uh, gosh, I can't remember who it was. We had, um, who was it that we had on a couple months ago doing the trips out to like Africa? I know they were canceled because of COVID, but let's, let's, doesn't matter. Let's talk about yours though. 
Yeah, so I mean, Fly Spain is in Andalusia, uh, so you kind of fly into Gibraltar or um, Malaga, and you're a couple of hours inland, and right where it is, it's this amazing spot where it, you know in the afternoon, like two o'clock, you get the sea breeze come in from the south and from the west, and they converge on this mountain where mm. right where Fly Spain is based, and it all just goes up, and you know. It's just an absolute mecca for paragliding in Spain. It's it just works all the time. You know, you've got clear air coming in, and the mountains great. They've got a ton of sites around it as well. Um, you can go to the coast and go coastal soaring. And again, I just I turned up there as a, as a paying customer the, the mm. first year and uh, hung out. And I said, you know, I'll help out. What do you need? I'll do this. I'll do that. And became friends you know over the the last evening and the next time i went out uh he would say oh can you drive the van can you do this you know and, and it just went from there and then we ended up going on family holidays together and stuff like that and i was guiding for him and you know i mean his boy now is ripping at crow 16 years old you know progressing incredibly you know and it's just that magic age of he's worked so hard to create a fantastic paragliding school and run amazing holidays for so many people. Mm. And now his son's coming through and just ripping. So cool. So it sounds to me like you're doing more, a lot more paragliding than paramotoring. Is that correct? Or am I wrong? No, no, because I'm based in the UK. I I am paramotoring. I kind of, I got my stuff in the garage Mm -hmm. right here and I out flying my paramotor all the time okay so let's share with us a couple stories best flight with everything that you've seen the most scenic flights things like that the most memorable flight uh cooper cars awesome to Mm. go and paramount there you know in the mountains in the alps um is that's pretty hard to be you taking off at altitude and you know a couple of thousand meters and climbing up and around the cloud at the top of the mountain and everything and there's obviously a ton of people there and that's a pretty special place to go um i went to oman in 2018 with like 30 of the best pilots in the world uh that was incredible mm-hmm. just like a tour to promote flying in oman uh, really special that's where i grew up as well so i kind of had this bond going home for the first time mm-hmm. in 30 years <laughs> Um, what's one place you haven't flown that would be your your dream place to fly oh, i don't know egypt I'd the be... pyramids yeah yeah i mean it's it, for sure it's nice but it's it's desert <laughs> desert no, there's a bit more desert okay. <laughs> uh no i'd love to go to egypt 100 percent. i, I mm. would and uh you know right around the corner there there's jordan i mean there's some wicked places in mm. the whole of arabia I, i'd love to explore more um i'd i'd really love to come to america me and navid have been chatting about doing a tour of america yeah. oh gosh, you know, coming over spending some time you know you guys have got some stunning scenery and you've got a lot of different types of scenery we you know, really do we really do you know it's continental in size you know your country Got a question here from you uh, from the chat. This is from Nick Griffith, and he wants to know what's your longest cross country that you've done. Longest cross country? I think I'm up to about 180k now, 180 kilometers. Okay, and can you convert that back over to miles for us? (laughs) Yeah, divide by 1.6. 108 or 180? 180. 80. Uh, God. I want to say 111 miles. Wow. I was going to say it sounds like a hundred. Wow. 111 yeah, yeah, miles cross country. Yeah, yeah. How long were you up in the air for? Oh, I, you know, like doing 50 Ks an hour. So, you know, best part of four hours. Wow. That's awesome. So you said you want to come to America. Did you say earlier that you did the Icarus? Yeah, the Icarus X, the shorter one. Okay. I've done that in the UK. Yeah, okay. Not the long one. So do you know where the Icarus is going to be in 2022? I wish I did. Well, I can, uh, I can yeah, help you, know, you with that answer. It's going to be in the United States. Ah, uh, cool. Yeah. So, hey, there's a reason to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. That's It's my kind of thing, a long flight, you know? Yeah. 
All right, here's another question from the chat. I got to make this a little bit wider so I can read it all. All right, this question comes from Jim CR120. So, with all the international work you do, are your students from all over? Are your students required to speak English or do you speak other languages? Good question. Uh, Theo obviously speaks French, Theo. Um, Jack speaks uh, some Spanish. I, I don't know whether he'd be confident to um, teach in Spanish. You know, I, Theo does teach in French and we have a lot of French pilots, you know, come out to Turkey to see him. There, there, there's a lot of British pilots come for Jack. Um, mm. A lot of Americans come in. So, I mean, I wouldn't say it was a requirement, but, you know, definitely helps. <laughs> what are some of the, uh, I guess, goals that you now have for yourself uh, coming up? As you, as you, I mean, with all, you got a lot of stuff. I mean, look, prioritize all these things. We've gone through a lot. We've gone through all yeah, my yeah. notes already. I mean, We're 30 yeah, minutes in and sorry, we've gone through all these sorry. notes. But but that's okay. I, I just want you to expand on it. So like with all these things, where's your priority? I mean, you know. So I I just had a major kind of like life change. I, I, I basically, I packed up my tree business. I, I've done that for 20 years. You chopped uh, it down, huh? You chopped it off. You and cut I it did. Off. Yeah, I pulled the ripcord, you know. Okay. Um, sold my gear and passed my customers on and i had a great run doing it um but i thought now i was looking at replacing the machines it was going to be like 50 grand to replace the machines mm -hmm. and i thought i'm gonna do something else i'm gonna work in flying you know so i'm kind of setting up now as kind of a bit of a social media company helping you know i'm already doing a lot of social media for different flying companies um, and then just being away, teaching as much as I can, guiding, that's the plan. So are, are, is everything you're doing now is flying related? Is that, is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, I still have my, my workshop where I make tables, but I, you know, I only do it when somebody wants one. All right. Uh, I am joined in the studio right here, Blaze, by this beautiful young lady. Here's Addison. So I would, if, if you're in the chat right now and uh, you're interested in winning this amazing windsock, say hi to Addison. She'll put your name in the wheel and uh, we'll go ahead and spin for that here in, uh, in a little bit. All right. John, what do you got? You've been sitting there so quiet. You had so many you questions. You know, I'm afraid to ask questions. You're going to yell at no, me. No, I'm not going to yell at you now because we're live. Oh, sure. <laughs> now, now you want me, but you know what? Oh my goodness, what happened? All uh, right. Well, you're thinking of your next question. I'm going to ask this question here uh, from the chat. Uh, Jim doesn't like when I say his name more than once. So I'm not going to say that this is from Jim CR 120. Fair enough? All right. He says, uh, Do you see Americans coming overseas for training? How much time do you spend in Spain? Yeah. So spain's been a tricky one i mean with covid the last couple of years it's been really tough you know um it, you know for everybody but europe you know they've kind of shut a lot of stuff down so i i the last time i was in spain was february last year wow and they are just really getting going again now um he fly spain's been surviving on uh, uh, brits living in spain coming to learn uh so it's been it's been really hard okay. um, we get a lot of americans uh, and we, we got um guys coming back this october who were with us last october coming back for more siv and they're on serial gliders you know rushes stuff like that but they want they want more acro you know they were pulling sats they were stalling on their own you know they come and learn with us for a week They'll buy a few days in the second week, do extra days if we've got space. And then by that time, you know, they're safe enough to be operating on their own. You know, they're still renting a life jacket. There's, we've always got a boat in the water, so we kind of keep an eye on the people that are with us. And, you know, he's like, I want to come back. He's booked his girlfriend on to do the full SIV, and he's going to, you know, do it as well. Mm-hmm. I want to uh, I want to spend some time talking a little bit about 
one of John's favorite subjects, which is gliders. Okay, John loves gliders. I mean, the minute I put a video out with him in it and flying a glider, it's already sold that glider, right? So, uh, but now, with this being said, this is difficult because now you're representing BGD, but you didn't mm -hmm. always fly BGD. So, no. what I'd like to ask you, and I, I already called BGD. They said you can talk dirty about them. No. Uh, let's compare some wings, some gliders yeah. that you've owned, what you like mm -hmm. to fly, and educate the audience now on gliders because there's a lot of people i'm looking at my next glider because i don't think it could take any more water landings um but i'm looking at my next my glider you know it's going to be something for cross country so i can try to keep up with some of my friends on long flights what have you flown what do you like compare them to one another and make recommendations. So my go -to... And make recommendations too for someone that's. And again, this is a paramotoring show predominantly. So let's talk paramotor, mm -hmm. not paraglider's. Yeah, uh, sure, wings. sure. And let's talk about you know what you would recommend for someone that's coming in new, someone that's more advanced for both acro as well as for cross country. Okay, so my, I mean, I just thought one of the greatest step forwards was the spider, the first spider because it was lightweight, you know, and I just, the, the, some of the older wings, they were so heavy and I, I just couldn't believe that they were still using such heavy materials, you know, for paramotor wings. And so I, I loved that spider, you know, I must've put hundred, 200 hours on it. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a great, it was a 26, you know, I'm 80 kilos in a mini plane, 20 kilos. So it was a big wing, but you can, you know, just cruise about. It's it's not the fastest, but I, you know, for flying on my own, I just take it up, practice wing overs, take it up, mm -hmm. practice wing overs, and I just it had a really nice feeling to it. Good brake pressure. I've flown the three as well. That's you know a a big improvement, and it's still a super nice wing. Um, the Spider Three. Yeah, that's what I I fly. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, and I I really like. I I I like it. I, I, like, um, it. I like it. Um, and for what you fly, I compare it to the Luna. Yeah, I think it's very similar yeah. to the Luna, the BGD Luna. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, no, that's okay. Um, I just got a, a Luna twenty. Uh, just done the British Championships on that, mm. and I loved it. I mean, I I got it this morning before i left for the british championship so hmm. it was a sink or swim you know and i i scored second highest in all the landings precision landing tasks nice. it had a great lick of speed you know i got in came second in the economy triangles so it was yeah a really nice all-round wing you know and that's what you need for competition it, you there's no point having this fastest and the, this our competition setup is designed to to be able to win it with an all-round wing um the gin wings i've flown a lot of those and i really like them too lovely feeling <clears throat> they always have great handling you know um gin's obviously been pushing the sport for for years and years um and that was kind of earlier today when i was talking to diego the the owner of uh Pero volo which produces mini plane um he was saying, you know, that's the, that's his, the ethos uh, and his, that's what he wants. He wants small engines with great wings. You know, when he first started, you couldn't believe how bad the wings were, you know, in 1988, he said it was unbelievable. They're two, four, six times more efficient than they were then. Mm -hmm. And so that's why he's kind of stuck with his small engine ethos with the company, you know, and the top 80. All right. Question, uh, Blaze. Um, how's the availability on the BGD wings? Because I know everybody else is uh, four to six months behind, and people seem to be able to get these BGDs. Yeah, uh, their factory is at full production. They are, That's awesome. you know, yeah, it's it's located in Sri Lanka. Um, so I I know a lot of the companies have really been struggling just to get the material because of COVID factors. BGD seem to have their supply sorted. I ordered three new wings when I joined the team and I've got two of them and one arrives in two days. 
Hmm. Hey, I want to uh, say a congratulations and a thank you to Chris Fenimore. Chris just made a chat, a super uh, chat for $10. Chris, thank you so much, buddy. And here's what he writes. And listen to this, please. He says, Woohoo! My son is in his second PPG training day at Sky School UK. It's 10 minutes oh, from nice. the Air, from the Air Force Base, right? From his Air Force, from his Air Force Base, yeah. And I think it was Sky, I was mentioning before, I think it was Sky School is who I was referring to. Uh-huh. Yeah. Congratulations, that, that, Chris. That's awesome. And thanks for the, uh, for the uh, donation to the show. Really appreciate that very, very much. Go ahead, Blaze. They're, t- they're half an hour up the road from me here. There you go. Sky School. Cool. Uh, yeah, if you've got other questions for Blaze, I mean, he's got so much knowledge here. Just make sure you, you throw that in there. Uh, here's a question from Nick Griffith. 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 He says, uh, can Blaze talk about the ethos not familiar in the States? The ethos. Of, of mini playing? About the ethos. Is that the... I'm not familiar with the ethos, Nick. <laughs> Because uh, I said ethos, ethos. of mini plane. Okay, ethos. It, I, what I mean, like the company ethos, you mm. know, the, you know what I mean, right? I do. John does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so here's a question from, I believe this is a question from James Sutherland, Charlie Soap. Uh, thoughts on acro for trikes? What do you think? Yeah, uh, I've seen people throwing them around a little bit. Yeah, I, I I don't have massive experience in trikes. You know, I've driven one around a field. I've never flown one. I'm really keen to to try one. Okay. Um, currently in the UK, you can only fly fly solo trike. You can't fly tandem trike. They're looking to try and change the rule mm. to take uh, instructors can then take passengers. Which I think would be really good. In a, for, in yeah, for learning situation. flights, yeah. no doubt. Yeah, let them feel like what it, what it feels like to be under a canopy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you currently can't get a qualification in solo in tandem foot launch. You can do it, but you can't get a qualification in it uh, under our governing body in the UK. So th- there are a fair number of people doing it. It's like you say, a grey area. Okay. Thing. Got another super chat donation. Geriatric PPG made a ten dollar donation to the show. Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. Thank you very, very much. Uh what about you know, you say here paramotor coach and guide. What do you mean by guide? So a lot of the holidays, once you're qualified, um, you can come on a holiday and you, we supply the motors in Spain and then we go for like a long cross country flights round beautiful spanish villages and mountains fly to the beach mm. you know hang out on the beach and then fly up and down the beach the afternoon and get the fly back or get the van back um so kind of like guided holidays are that you know you could come from the states and all you've got to bring is your wing you haven't got to bring your motor. i was talking to todd Falstead about that yankee paramotor about going to spain and doing one of those trips so mm. we have been uh talking about it the last one, the boys, all oh, they're a group of Scottish lads I took. This was back in February at Fly Spain. And they were like all really up for doing some distance. You know, they want, you know, I said, I'll get up whenever you want. Let's get up and take the early air and then we'll get some lunch and go for another flight in the evening. And we flew like nearly 500 kilometers in a week, you know, which is some, some good distance. Wow. How how much do trips like that cost? I mean, can you speak in American dollars or? That's three hundred and ten miles. Just thought yeah. I'd add that in. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I I wouldn't like to say. I mean, head to the Fly Spain website and and look at their. Okay. That's who I do the parameter trips, guided trips. Have a look on there and and say tell them I sent you. <laughs> okay. Um, they'll either charge you more or you'll get some discount blazing sky is a YouTube channel and yeah. 
kind of share with everybody here because everybody obviously on the show has YouTube, otherwise I'm going to be watching it right now. But kind of share um, kind of the direction of the channel because you've got some great stuff on there too. Where it's been, I know there's been a little bit of educational too on equipment, video equipment, and how to make some of these videos and shots that you're taking. But kind of talk about like what you've put on it so far. John, if you wouldn't mind, if you can look Working up. Working on it. Yep. And I know you just put in, oh, never mind. Craig Taylor, I think, just beat you to it. So, he's pretty quick, Craig. He's Craig Taylor, yeah. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's pretty amazing. So like it's, it's, it's actually, it's not my biggest channel. <laughs> oh, really? No, my biggest channel is, is about cutting trees. <laughs> and I, I started it about flying. And then I put up one video of trees. And like it just kind of, not exploded, but it got pretty big. Um. And so I couldn't post videos of flying anymore. So I filmed, you know, I kept filming, but I had nowhere to post it. So I thought, right, this is it. I've got to start another channel just because I want somewhere to put my videos. I never made videos. I didn't want to say I didn't make them for other people. I never, when I'm filming them, I'm never thinking oh, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I never do any storyboarding. I just shoot. You know, and if you go to the air games in Turkey, you that's all you have to do is shoot because it's just stuff going on everywhere. You know, it's a fantastic week. Um, and that's easy to make a kind of clips reel from. The GoPro one was last October and a guy taught me how to get this underneath shot. And I just I just thought it was a great shot. So I, I thought, you know, I'll share that how to do it. Um, it it's it's funny because i i'm i'm always logged in as that i have all my flying channels i've got you guys they're all logged in and, and i'm logged in as blazing sky but i i don't have a list of videos i'm gonna make i i'll just it'll be what i shoot next mm -hmm. <laughs> you know there'll be probably one coming up from my birthday we've just been the indoor skydiving um when was your so birthday blaze friday Friday, happy belated birthday! Happy birthday! Thank you, thank you. So I took uh, took the kids and my wife. We all went indoor skydiving, which that That's was fun. really. It was a gift from a really nice guy as well. He bought me that, and I thought that was really That'd lovely awesome. thing to have. That's something family. I always wanted to do. That's becoming a yeah. big thing right now. Is, is there a, mm -hmm. is there a, an age limit? Like you know, once you get to fifty seven, you can't do that because a chance you could hurt some, yourself. It says the age limit on the ticket. It says from 10 to 103. Oh, Ripper, you're out. Sorry, buddy. Oh, man. Five digs tonight, guys. He's beating me up <laughs> with a bull peen hammer. Wow. <laughs> cool. Uh, let's give you a second to breathe. Let's give you a second to collect your thoughts. Again, if anybody else in the chat has any questions from Blaze, it's two. What the heck, what time is it? It's almost two in the morning for him. No, three in the morning. Holy cow! Right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we are going to have the after show a little bit as well, and Blaze says he will stick around for that. But uh, why don't we spin the wheel? We've got the windsock to give away tonight. Um, let's see if we can let's see if I can do this here. There it is. It's kind of kind of visible, John. Is that all right? It's not too bad. It works. It works for me. That's better than last week. So you can see everybody's names here. Addison's put them in. Uh, kind of hard to see the names on the wheel, but we'll get a bit shy. You'll definitely see the winner when it pops up. So let's hit it here. It's spinning. It's spinning. Thanks everybody for joining us tonight. Let's see. I'll give you the play-by-play. -play. It's still spinning. All right. There's Anthony Peregringo, Derek Trout. Maybe could be Jeff Mack. It's slowing down on Jeff Mack. It is Jeff Mack. Congratulations, yeah. Jeff Mack. You just won a pair of orange windsock. How long know. do I have to wait? Uh, what, till you say congratulations? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you wait till somebody else says that? Fair enough. All right. Now you can say it. No one said it yet. All right. <laughs> so there it is. So congratulations to Jeff Mack. Jeff Mack, if you want to send me an email, uh, it says right at the bottom of the screen right there, or you can send me a, well, no, it doesn't say there anymore. Facebook, Messenger, best way. I'll get this out to you right away. Congratulations. Uh, we have a question in the chat from uh, someone who shall not be named. 
because he doesn't want his name out there every time. But we appreciate that Jim does ask a lot of questions. That's awesome. He says, so if anyone gets to travel to the United Kingdom, where are there places to fly P uh, paragliding and paramotoring? Mm. Uh, there's a great club scene for paragliding. There's guest memberships for the day or the week. Uh, you know, you just go onto the BHPA, look at which club there is, and they're, they're super friendly. Uh, you've got to have insurance, so just make sure you got your your ticket. I can't remember what your tickets are called, but like your P three or P. Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, John, you can chime in on that. The ratings. I mean, I got my ticket. What do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm planning on going at some time. I just waiting for the world to get to some normalcy before I travel. You know, um, on the, the other side of the pond. Yeah, the paramotoring, you know, just get on Facebook and meet some people because that's sure. all kind of, you know, everybody's got their little spot, you know, and um, we're all pretty welcoming, you know. Same here. If you ever get over here, we're the same way. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you, like, when, when you go fly, you said, hey, look, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll make a video. Do you like? We, I was talking about this maybe with John earlier today, or, or or someone I was talking about this was how how infrequently I I put a camera on anymore. It's just few and far between. Um, do you like to always fly with the camera in case something happens? Do you like to say this is my free relaxing time? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I like I like to get content to promote mini plane BGD. Okay, you know I I, I love doing that. But I don't, I'm not always doing pieces to camera. Um, I'm not really storyboarding unless we get, I'm going to do it as a thing, you know, but I would, yeah, I, I'm happy to fly without anything. You know, just, I'd probably take a snap on my phone. Okay. When you started flying, you had a job that wasn't in you know, the tree service, right? You started flying mm -hmm. while you were still doing that. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel, because there's a lot of people, a lot of friends of, of ours here in the States that are going from the regular job, they're dropping that job, and then they're becoming paramotor instructors. And there's a lot of them now. And it's, it's almost a saturation of the market of instructors to the point where I worry, is there going to be enough students for everybody, for all my friends out there? Um, so the big thing, and, and someone asked me today if I would ever start instructing. And I said, no. I, I said, I, I, for me personally... This is, this is where I go to decompress. This is my relaxation yeah. time from, from all the worries of the world, from the challenges that my family faces, and the challenges I face from working, the stress that comes with working. Do you feel like when you moved into the world of now I am uh, an instructor uh, and a guide, and this is now my job, do you lose some of that excuse me, that love, that passion, because it's now become a job, not just your release, your, your hobby, your sport, your love. Uh, I totally get that. And, and windsurfing, I was struggling. After seven summers, I was struggling because I was just teaching beginners over and over again, the same thing week in, week out. And it was great. It was fantastic. But I'd, by the end of seven summers of doing that, I'd, I'd had enough. Um, so I was very conscious in my early days of flying of not rushing into doing that. And I think the fact I've come across this kind of teaching and being involved in the teaching of the higher levels of flying, that's been really great because you are out flying. You're not teaching people just to ground. There's nothing wrong with teaching people to ground handle. I love going to a school and watching people pick the wing up for the first time, you know, that's amazing but i don't want to do it week in week out um there is a danger of of kind of you know stagnating there mm. and i think there are some great people and you get these really great schools that their instructors all go flying together and you know you can see that it comes across in in their staff you know youtube videos where they're out as a team flying and having fun and you know, getting the job done for the students during the week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, we're the same at Rise, you know, last time we were there, we were, you know, again, it's not that the boys 
you know they teach people and they're really good at teaching people which makes people progress fast but not everybody progresses that fast and we have people coming along they're just they booked a flight and they're kind of friends with one of us or something and they're a little bit on the fringe of the group they haven't booked a course and we said oh just come and have a few days or book in for this or that and he says i just can't at the moment i just i haven't got the money haven't you know i haven't worked for a year because of covid and so it kind of got us thinking look we're there we're operating um we're all in fortunate positions but at the same time you can't just give it all away for free the, the guys have worked so hard to learn all this stuff and that's hours and hours you know and it's value they've added to themselves so basically we came up with this idea if you're 16 to 25 you can come for half price you know and that means mm. that those kids are learning from the best you know they're learning you know the right way you know with the right safety level of backup everything going on being disciplined about how they their learning process and seeing it through to the end and i just thought that was brilliant you know to jack and tia they're just they want to do this as a youth development you know and they wish they'd had the opportunity for something like that when they were it used to be just sitting on the hill can i ask you a question about my helico can i ask you about my sat you know mm. and you know all the older guys were really helped them out a lot but there was no opportunity to go for a week and get somebody's time dedicated to them for that week yeah you know? how much how much are you discouraging i mean it sounds like you're if someone were to ask you know self-training versus you know, going and, and getting educated you're full on go uh you need to get trained uh by an instructor i mean how how much do you discourage people from self-training themselves I I would encourage them to invest in themselves. You know, I, I did. I, I invested in myself. I did six SIVs. I've worked on, wow. you know, loads art since then. But, you know, I, I had to go at my own pace. I wasn't natural at doing sats or, you know, stalls or anything. I found it really difficult. You know, I, you know, you spin the entry to a sat, you know about it. That's mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah you know i i'd encourage them to invest in themselves it pays off it really pays off the amount you learn you know um and we did the same thing for girls we thought we're doing a youth week let's do a ladies week mm. and so the ladies coming there's going to be two separate courses this week you know there's going to be a, a spread in cross country magazine all about it but we're awesome. really excited for the future of this you know alexis is booked on yeah, we, were talking about earlier. we talked about Alexis Quintana, uh, former guest, mm -hmm. former uh, uh, employee and instructor over at our Lone Star Paramotor uh, with Ron Torrent. Um, this is a question that's come up in the past. How soon after someone gets their initial training, how soon is too soon or when's the right time to go for your SIV course? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh with paragliding as soon as you're catching thermals you know happily and comfortably you should be coming on sov with paramotoring this is where this gray area starts i mean don't come on it to learn infinity tumbling mm -hmm. <laughs> come on it to be a better pilot you know come on it and be able to fly be confident holding in collapses confident with frontal collapses you don't need to focus on them every flight you'll do wing overs too every flight you'll work on the things you want to work with you know your pitch control your roll control um it's it, you get so much out of sov yeah. um and investing in yourself very good well we are right about at the top of the hour here and the show so in a moment here, we're going to go into the after show. So if you have any other questions for Blaze or if you want to just come on and say hi or, or listen to his English accent for a little while, you can do that as well. A little um, mesmerizing, I got to mesmerizing, I got to say. <laughs> Close your eyes. You think you're listening to Greg sometimes too, right? Uh, <laughs> there you go. Um, John, any last questions from you? 
Blaze, I'll leave, give you a, a second if you have any last thoughts that you want to uh, convey to the audience. I, I, went, I, I was told, don't look at the chat, but like all my boys who I normally message on the chat, I just want to say hi, uh, you know, all, all everyone who's dropped in tonight. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I think it's a great show. I'm honored to be on it. I really am. So thank you. Well, we appreciate having you, Blaze. Yeah, and I highly recommend to everybody, check out Blaze in the Sky uh, on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. You'll really enjoy all the content there. Very cool. Thank you again for being on here. Again, next week, guys, we are not doing a show. And then I guess even... No, after that, we've got uh, John, John, John. John Isley. And then I will see a lot of you again, which I'm very excited, at Dave Purden flying. John, not sure if you're coming or not, right, at this point? Do I have a place to sleep? If I have a place to sleep, I'm coming. I told you I'll bring a tent. <laughs> I told you I'll bring a tent. But John, Can't do it. Can't John, do a tent. John is going to be at the Endless Foot Drag. He has, well, I just announced. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right. That all the plans good. are made. I will be at EFD. Very good. All right. Well, Blaze, thank you so much again. We're going to go into the after show. I'll put the codes up. So if you want to jump in, we'll get you in here. Guys, thanks so much. Have a great two weeks. We'll see you in two weeks on the next one. Thanks, all everybody. Right. Thanks, Blaze. Thank you.